What is a soldier's favorite type of watch? Well, that's easy, it's the Roamer. Hello everybody, I'm Exony, and today I want to welcome you to the next episode of Know the Numbers, your one-stop shop for all numbers in Team Fortress 2. And today we'll be going over the soldier. Last time we did scout, so soldier this time we're going down the list. And we're going to be covering everything, from the soldier himself, his health and his speed, to his primary weapons, his secondaries, and his wide variety of melees. If you want to skip to any specific part of this video, say you just want to watch the primaries or secondaries, you can click on the screen right now to jump into those sections. If you're looking for a weapon in particular, look down in the description, I've completely annotated where every weapon is in this video. So if you just want to look at the man treads, go down in the description and find the man treads on the list and just jump to that part of the video. And with all of that said, I hope you enjoy and let's get into this. The soldier is a die-hard patriot from America's heartland. Tough and well-armed, he is extremely versatile, capable of offense and defense. He has the second highest health pool in the game, only second to the heavy, with 200 HP, which means he can be overhealed to 300 with the Medigun, Crits Creek, or the Vaccinator, or overhealed to 251 with the Quick Fix. If a soldier equips the battalion's backup, his base health will be increased to 220. This means that he can be overhealed to 330 with all Mediguns other than the Quick Fix, and with the Quick Fix, he can be buffed to 200. In 76. The soldier's trade-off for his high health pool is his lack of base speed, moving only 3% faster than the heavy. The soldier has a base speed of 80% or 240 hammer units per second, or about 10.2 miles per hour, but for simplicity's sake, we will just be using percents here. Just keep in mind that 100% speed is the speed that pyros, engineers, and snipers all move at. At default speed when moving backwards, the soldier will move at 72% movement speed, while crouched he moves at 27%, and while swimming he moves at 64% movement speed. Now, when a soldier is using Using the charge shot with the cow mangler, during the period that it's charging, his speed will be greatly reduced, and his normal speed and backward speed are actually identical at 27% movement speed. The only other times movement speeds are the same normally and backwards are when a heavy is spun up with the brass beast or a sniper is scoped with a sniper rifle, which is pretty interesting. You move crouched at 9% and swim at 21% during this time. Now we get to the nitty gritty of the escape plan, which gives the soldier increased movement speed while his health is lower, but it works in tiers. The first tier is while the soldier is at a above 160 health, when it'll have no effect while it's pulled out. While the soldier is in between 121 and 160 health though, the soldier's normal speed will be increased to 88%, his backward speed will be increased to 69%, while his crouch and swimming speed will be increased to 29 and 70% respectively. When the soldier's health is between 120 and 81, his speed will be boosted to 96% normal, 86% backwards, 32% crouched, and 77% swimming. Now while the soldier's health is between 80 and 41, his speed will be up to 112% normally, 101% backwards, 37% crouched, and 90% while swimming. And finally, the lowest tier you can possibly get is while the soldier is below 41 health. He will gain the biggest boost in speed, with his normal movements being enhanced to 128%, which is only 5% slower than the scout. While moving backwards, the soldier will move at 115%, and while swimming and crouched, he will move at 43% and 102% respectively. The soldier can offset his low base mobility by shooting rockets at himself to rocket jump. Rocket jumping does deal damage to the soldier, but it allows him to be become extremely mobile and is one of the most flexible mechanics in the game. It can be used to engage the enemies from advantageous positions, quickly escape a fight, or even just get to the battle faster. A soldier who has mastery over rocket jumping has an advantage over soldiers who don't. It is a skill that can completely benefit you as a player, but this isn't really a guide video, it's more just going over the numbers. There are plenty of great guides out there for learning how to rocket jump, and I would recommend taking a look at any of those or trying to get yourself better at that, because rocket jumping is a core skill at his disposal. So let's get into the primary weapons now. So much like in the previous Know the Numbers, we'll start here with the primary weapons. The soldier has quite an array of rocket launchers that his disposal for a variety of situations. You'll be able to see them all here with annotations to their part of this video, so if you just want to skip past everything to get to the airstrike, go for it. I will be spending a minute or two before the primaries actually start talking about the terms I'll be using for each of them to help you gain a better understanding of what I'm saying when I talk about the splash damage of a rocket, the maximum or minimum damage that the rocket launcher can do, or anything like that. So if you want to see that, it'll be right now, right after I stop talking, or if you want to skip it, click on the stock rocket launcher to get straight into the primary weapons. So you're sticking around for this part? Cool. 
so let's talk about the layout. To start, I'll tell you the name of the weapon and what it looks like, followed by the ammo loaded and the ammo stored in reserve. After that, I'll talk about the damage on a rocket's direct hit in three numbers, maximum, base, and minimum damage. All of the soldier's rocket launchers have a maximum ramp up of 125%, which means that at point blank range, you'll be dealing 25% more damage than the base weapon damage. So I use this term to refer to like a point blank attack. The base damage is the damage the weapon will be dealing at medium ranges, which you can imagine imagine as the spawn door on 242 the wall. The minimum damage is the lowest possible amount of damage the rocket can deal on a direct hit, which for distance you can imagine from one battlement on 24 to the other. Now these aren't the only three numbers involved with damage, but these are the three ranges. So you can imagine from point blank to a medium range, it will do a damage somewhere in that range. Same with medium to far range. And after we cover damage, we'll dive into splash damage, which is the most intricate part of the rocket launcher's mechanics. I'll go over it in depth here so you don't have to listen and we give this information on each rocket launcher itself. Each rocket has a splash radius which I will tell you in feet and hammer units which you can visualize as the radius of a sphere created where the rocket impacts. So obviously the splash will be less damaging the further away from the rocket the target was. Sigsuv actually has a really good video where he visualizes the explosion so I'd recommend checking that out. There'll be a annotation like right here. Next will be the self damage and we'll have two different self damage numbers. The first represents the damage that the soldier will take from his own rocket while standing on the ground or if the rocket hits an enemy and the soldier damaging both. This one will be higher than the second number because the second range is about self damage the soldier will take if he is airborne and the rocket does not connect with the enemy players. And then last but certainly not least we'll have the function time starting with the attack intervals which just means the amount of time in between each of the weapons attacks. Then will be the first reload speed which is the time it takes the rocket launcher to do its first reload while all other reloads following that will take less time making it more efficient to do multiple reloads at once. So that's about everything that I want to clarify before we jump into the primary weapons, so without further ado, let's get into it. The rocket launcher is the soldier's stock primary weapon. It is a rocket propelling device with a protruding metal side and a wide exhaust port. It loads 4 rockets and stores 20 in reserve. The rockets fired from it travel at around 1100 hammer units per second which, for reference, is almost 4 times faster than the pyro, sniper, and engineer. The rockets deal significant damage on direct hits, doing a maximum of 112 damage at maximum ramp up, 90 base damage at medium ranges, and 48 minimum damage. On critical direct hits, the rockets will deal 270 damage, and on mini crits they will deal from 122 to 151 damage depending on your range to the target. Now all of that was talking about direct damage, but all rocket launchers have splash damage on them, which means you don't have to be perfectly accurate to deal damage with this weapon. The rockets have a minimum splash of 9.1 feet or 100 146 hammer units, and the splash damage reduces from the direct damage by 1% for every 2.88 hammer units away from the rocket's original impact. This just means that the further they are away from the rocket's original detonation point, the less damage they will take from it. The rockets will deal 27 to 89 damage to the soldier himself if he is caught within the blast, but if he's airborne it'll only deal 27 to 46 self damage. Let's move on to function times. The rocket launcher has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots. Its first reload will take 0.92 seconds, with all consecutive reloads after the first taking 0.8 seconds, making it much more efficient to reload multiple rockets at a time. And because it shares all of the stats with the rocket launcher, I'm going to bring in the original as well. The original is styled after the rocket launcher from Quake itself. It's one main difference from the rocket launcher other than how it looks is that its rockets originate from the center of your screen. For reference, with a normal rocket launcher or any other rocket launcher for that matter, the projectiles will always originate from the right hand side of your screen if you do not have left handed view models on, and with left handed view models on they originate from the left hand side of your screen, firing from a slight angle. So with the original, you have the option to fire in a straight line. This can help some people master advanced rocket jumping techniques or even just help people become better at playing soldier. It's a completely personal choice, and other than that, there are no differences between these two weapons, so you can choose whichever one you want. The first unlockable rocket launcher the soldier received was the direct hit. It is a high-tech rocket launcher with a slimmed barrel and a smaller exhaust port than the normal one, outfitted with a purely cosmetic scope. Similar to the stock, the direct hit loads 4 rockets at a time and holds 20 in reserve. Unlike the stock though, the direct hit rockets travel 80% faster at 1980 hammer units per second to be exact. Another notable difference between this and the stock rocket launcher is that the direct hit does 25% more damage. At maximum, it'll deal 140 damage, which is enough to one-shot light classes like the Scout, Engineer, and Spy. Its base damage is 112, and its minimum is 59. Keep in mind those are all for direct hits. 
On critical hits, these direct hits will deal a whopping 338 damage on direct hits, and mini crits will deal 152 to 189. And one last thing to note about the direct hit is that it will mini crit airborne targets. This means anybody who is knocked airborne by an explosion, a compression blast, or even the grappling hook will receive 100% guaranteed mini crits from this weapon. This gives the soldier the credible ability to deny other soldiers or demo men from jumping, or gives you the ability to knock people up in the air with a rocket and then just destroy them with the second. So what does the direct hit have to give up for its faster rockets and increased damage? Well the answer would be splash damage. The direct hit's explosion radius is 70% smaller than that of the stock, giving it a minuscule radius of 2.7 feet, which is about the same as 44 hammer units. For a reference of how small this is, the direct hit splash has the width of an operational teleporter, which is pretty small. Its damage reduction has incredible fall off as well, losing 1% of the total damage over 0.86 hammer units. These two things combined mean that the direct hit is nearly useless when it comes to splash damage, meaning you'll have to go for direct hits. However, for the soldiers shooting the rockets, the splash radius is the same as normal rocket launchers, enabling normal rocket jumping. The direct hit will deal 27 to 89 normal splash damage if you're caught in your own explosion, and 27 to 46 splash damage on rocket jump. The direct hit's function times are also identical to the stock rocket launchers, with an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds, and all consecutive reloads after that taking 0.8 seconds. This next rocket launcher was introduced in the Man Economy update. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the Black Box. The Black Box is a black rectangular rocket launcher with rounded edges sporting two dark gray fastening bands near the front end and a case covering hanging open at both ends. The Black Box stores three rockets and carries 20 in reserve. The rockets travel at the same speed as the normal rocket launcher at 1,100 hammer units per second. The Black Box's damage is identical to the stock rocket launchers, dealing 112 damage on direct hits at point blank. 90 base damage, and 48 damage at maximum falloff. On a critical hit, it'll deal 270 damage, and on mini crits it will deal 122 to 151 damage depending on distance to the target. The black box has a pretty unique ability to heal the soldier wielding it for the damage he deals. The weapon heals you 1 health point per 4.5 damage the rocket launcher does to a maximum of 20 health gained per rocket at 90 damage across all targets. This means you can deal 45 damage to 2 targets and you'll still get 20 health, it's just the damage dealt by that one rocket. The healing cannot overheal the soldier, and the effect will not be gained by shooting a cloaked spy or an uber charged enemy, but it can be gained by shooting a disguised spy or a scout using the bonk atomic punch. Now onto the splash damage, the black box's splash functions identically to the stock rocket launcher. The rockets have a minimum splash of 9.1 feet or 146 hammer units. The splash damage reduces from the direct damage by 1% for every 2.88 hammer units away from the rocket's original impact. This creates a sphere of damage around the rocket's impact point, and the rocket will deal 27 to 89 to the soldier if he's caught within the blast, but if he's airborne it'll only deal 27 to 46 self damage. And finally we have the attack intervals, which are the same as a stock rocket launcher as well, with an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between attacks, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds, and all consecutive reloads will take 0.8 seconds. All things considered, the black box is a rocket launcher that excels in increasing the soldier's survivability at the cost of some of his damage output. The soldier also has a training rocket launcher for those who just want to practice their rocket jumping. This is the Rocket Jumper. The Rocket Jumper is similar in shape to the Rocket Launcher with orange colorings. It features an orange and white painted exhaust with a sign mounted on the front and flared muzzle. The Rocket Jumper loads 4 rockets and stores a whopping 60 rockets in reserve, and the rockets fired travel at the same speed as the stock Rocket Launcher at 1,100 hammer units per second. The Rocket Jumper's damage stat is pretty easy to remember. Ready? Max damage, 0. Base damage, 0. Minimum damage, 0. Critical damage, 0. And finally, mini crits do 0 to 0 damage. And since the rocket jumper doesn't have a splash damage statistic because it deals no damage, we'll just jump into the function times, which are the same as all the other rocket launchers we've talked about so far. It has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds, with all consecutive reloads taking 0.8 seconds. The rocket jumper also has a special flying noise that plays when you're airborne via a rocket jump to acknowledge the player's successful jumps were done, which is a good indicator if you're trying to to use a weapon like the Market Gardener and you're trying to really pick up on how to use it. Players with the Rocket Jumper equipped cannot pick up the Intelligence or pick up the Jack in pastime. 
The Liberty Launcher is up next. It's an army green rocket launcher with tan wooden handles, a leaf sight adorned with a white US Army insignia, and a cracked wooden shoulder rest with a wire frame exhaust port. It stores an extra rocket when compared to the normal rocket launcher, loading 5 rockets at a time and carrying 20 in reserve. Its rockets travel about 40% faster than the stock's rockets at about 1,540 hammer units per second. The Liberty Launcher gives up 25% of its damage for faster rockets and an extra shot, dealing a maximum of 84 damage at point blank, a base damage of 68, and a minimum of 36 damage per rocket on direct hits. On a critical hit, it'll deal 203 damage, and on mini crits, it'll deal from 92 to 113, depending on the distance to the target. So, the damage isn't incredible on this weapon, but you are giving it up for an extra shot. The Liberty Launcher's splash damage is identical to the stocks with a splash radius of 9.1 feet or 146 hammer units and a damage reduction of 1% per 2.88 hammer units. The Liberty Launcher deals 27 to 89 self damage if you're caught within the explosion along with an enemy, but if you're just rocket jumping, it has a 25% reduction to self damage from your own rockets. So on rockets that do not connect with enemies, it'll only deal 20 to 35 damage per rocket jump, making the Liberty Launcher a nice alternative to use Using the gunboats. Please note the damage reduction from the gunboats do not stack to 85% resistance with the Liberty Launcher. It will actually end up at being about 12 damage per rocket jump because the effects do not stack the resistance additively just because of how damage reduction works in TF2. Finally, the Liberty Launcher's function times are all identical to the other rocket launchers with an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds with all consecutive reloads taking 0.8 seconds. It's especially important to remember that consecutive of reloads take less time with this weapon because of five rockets you will need to be reloading so if you're reloading them one at a time it's going to take you so much longer than the normal rocket launcher now we have what is in my opinion one of the coolest looking rocket launchers in the game the Kalmangler 5000. The Kalmangler is a large, shoulder-fired, retro-futuristic raygun that fires blasts of team-colored energy. The Kalmangler loads four rockets and has an infinite supply of ammo in reserve. The projectiles from the Kalmangler travel at the same speed as a normal rocket launcher at 1,100 hammer units per second. The Kalmangler's damage is identical to the stock rocket launchers with a few added bits. The projectiles deal a maximum of 112 damage at point blank, 90 base damage, and a minimum of 48 damage on direct hits. It should be noted that the Kalmangler does deal 80% less damage to all buildings in the game, so it'll only deal 18 damage on direct hits to sentries, dispensers, and teleporters. The Kalmangler is incapable of dealing critical hits on its own, which means it cannot be crit boosted by the Kritzkrieg, or power canteens, or pumpkins, or anything like that. There are only two situations in when the projectile from the Kalmangler can crit. One of them is when the projectile is reflected by a Kritzkrieg flamethrower, and the other is against a stunned Merasmus. In either of these cases, it'll do 200 70 damage, but those situations are so rare or seasonal that they don't really matter. And on mini crits, it deals from 122 to 151 damage. The Kalmangler has an alternate fire that can be used when it is fully loaded. The soldier will slow down to a snail's pace and charge up the Kalmangler for about 2 seconds. When charged, your ammo bar is completely depleted and it fires a single charge shot at normal speed and with normal blast radius, but the shot deals a guaranteed mini crit and anyone caught within that blast will be lit on fire. The charge shot's afterburn will deal 3 damage damage every half second for 6 damage a second for 6 seconds for a total of 36 afterburn damage, 24 less afterburn than the flamethrowers. If the afterburn is mini crit boosted, it will deal 4 damage per take and 8 damage per second for a total of 48 damage over 6 seconds. And one last thing to note about the Kalmangler's charge shot is that if it hits any building, it will be disabled for 4 seconds. This means sentries will not shoot, teleporters will not teleport, and dispensers will not dispense for the whole duration of that 4 seconds. The Kalmangler splash is equivalent to the stocks with a splash radius of 9.1 feet or 146 hammer units with the damage fading by 1% every 2.88 hammer units. It will deal 27 to 89 self damage to a soldier caught within his own rocket's explosion or 27 to 46 self damage on rocket jumps. And finally, the function times are all also the same with an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds with all consecutive reloads taking 0.8 seconds. The only thing left to note about its intervals is that it has a 
6 second afterburn duration. Next up we have the Beggar's Bazooka, which is an interesting rocket launcher and its looks fit the name. It is a crude rocket launcher made from pipes, mismatched handles, and a filter held together with bolts, electrical tape, and various straps and belts. A funnel is attached to the end as a makeshift exhaust port. The Beggar's Bazooka starts with 0 ammo loaded in its clip and 20 ammo in reserve. It is a unique firing style when compared to the other rocket launchers as you have to load up the shots by holding your primary fire button and releasing it to fire up to 3 rockets loaded. If you try to load more than 3 rockets, they will proceed to misfire on you until the weapon is unloaded or you release the remaining rockets. These misfires can actually be used to rocket jump to pull off some really crazy maneuvers or deal damage to someone who is incredibly close to you. The rockets fired from the Beggar's Bazooka travel at the same speed as normal rockets and have a 3 degree spread when firing, making it less accurate at ranges compared to other rocket launchers. The Beggar's Bazooka deals damage identical to the stock rocket launcher, dealing 112 damage at point blank, 90 base damage, and a minimum of 48 damage on direct hits. On critical hits, it will deal 270 per rocket, and with mini crits, it will deal 122 to 151 damage, depending on your range to the target. The Beggar's Bazooka suffers from a 20% smaller explosion radius when compared to other rocket launchers. It has a splash radius of 7.3 feet or 117 hammer units. The damage decays at 1% for every 2.33 hammer units away from the original impact point. The explosions would deal 27 to 89 damage to a soldier caught within the blast, or 90 damage if you overload the weapon. On rocket jumps, the rockets would deal 27 to 46 when they are shot from the weapon, or 54 if they explode in the chamber while no one is around. The attack intervals for the bazooka are interesting because of its unique loading style. Its attack interval is 70% faster than the other rocket launchers, with 0.24 seconds in between attacks to rapidly spew out rockets, but it has longer reloads with the first reload taking 1.19 six seconds and all consecutive reloads taking 1.04 seconds. Last thing to note about the bazooka is that its ammo cannot be gained from payloads or dispensers while it is your active weapon, meaning you will have to switch to your secondary or your melee weapon to refill ammo from either of those sources. And now the final rocket launcher for today will be none other than the airstrike. The airstrike is a green atom bomb shaped rocket launcher with a white checkered pattern near the front and tannish wooden handles. It is the only rocket launcher besides the cow mangler to have a custom projectile. It fires green and white missiles with fins on the front and back. It loads 4 rockets initially, but the clip size will increase as you get kills with this weapon, up to a maximum of 8 rockets a clip once you have gained 4 kills with this weapon. It stores the normal 20 rockets in reserve, and the rockets travel at 1,100 hammer units per second like the stock rocket launcher. The airstrike has a 15% damage penalty, meaning it does 95 damage at maximum ramp up, 76 base damage, and 40 minimum damage on direct hits. On critical hits, it will deal 230 damage a rocket and on mini crits it'll deal 103 to 129 damage on direct hits. Now for the splash damage and attack intervals we'll be going over two sets of numbers. The first set will be when you're just firing the weapon normally and for this set the airstrike has a 10% smaller blast radius than the normal rocket launcher with a radius of 8.19 feet or 131 hammer units. It loses 1% of its damage for every 2.62 hammer units from the original impact point and it deals 23 to 75 self damage to the soldier if he is caught within the explosion with the target. The airstrike also has a 15% resistance to your own explosives while rocket jumping, meaning you will only take 23 to 39 damage on rocket jumps. While on the ground, the airstrike has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots and a 0.92 second first reload speed with all consecutive reloads taking 0.8 seconds. Now the interesting part of this weapon is while you are airborne via an explosion, the rocket launcher's attack interval would decrease by 65%, meaning you will only have 0.28 seconds in between shots while airborne. Only 0.4 seconds slower than the Beggar's Bazooka attack interval, meaning you can fire incredibly fast while in the air, but also while you are airborne raining down rockets, you will have about a 20% smaller blast radius on top of the 10% smaller radius the weapon normally has, which makes the damage decay that much faster at 1% per 2.09 hammer unit. This just means, while jumping with this weapon, you can unload the expanded clip extremely fast, but you have to be careful with your aim if you want to actually hit anything. The last thing to note about this before we move on to any of the secondary items, while wielding this weapon, the kills that you store can be stolen by an Islander wielding demo man or a bizarre barring and sniper. All three of these weapons have a kill storing mechanic that shares between them. Meaning, if a bizarre bargain sniper headshots you while you're using the airstrike and you have 10 kills, he will gain the 10 heads that you had and one for killing you. This works between all three of these, so an Islander demo man killing a sniper will gain that, and vice versa with the airstrike and the. 
Hey, welcome to the secondary weapons. I'm glad you made it. Here we're going to be going over all the weapons and items in the soldier's secondary slot. This ranges from shotguns to shoes to backpacks, and we're going to go over all of them. We're going to start with the shotguns, so the shotgun, the reserve shooter, and the panic attack, followed by the righteous bison. Then we'll go over the gunboats and mantreads, the soldier's choices in footwear. And then we'll talk about the banners, the buff banner, the battalion's backup, and the conqueror. Then after that, there's the base jumper. I'm going to just kind of huddle that in there with the backpacks. And yeah, that's about it. So like before, on your screen right now are annotations on each of the items, so if you want to skip to the panic attack and you know, just you don't want to listen to the shotgun and the reserve shooter, I wouldn't blame you. You've probably been listening to me for too long already anyways. And with that said, let's get into the secondaries. The soldier's stock secondary weapon is his shotgun. It's a pump action styled shotgun that's shared by the soldier, pyro, and heavy. It stores 6 shots and has 32 shots in reserve. And while it shares many features with the scout scattergun, the maximum damage that the shotgun can do is only 9 per pellet instead of the 10.5 per pellet like the scout scattergun can do because of the higher ramp up that the scattergun has. They have the same base damage as 6 per pellet and a minimum damage of 3 per pellet. The shotgun shoots 10 pellets and at point blank can do 80 to 90 damage, at medium range 10 to 30, and at long range 3 to 10. On critical hit it does 18 damage per pellet and on mini crits it'll do 8.1 to 12.1 per pellet. And then for function times, it has an attack interval equivalent to the scattergun's, meaning that there is 0.625 seconds in between shots. Its major difference from the scattergun for function times is its reload speed, with its first reload taking 1 second, and all consecutive reloads taking 0.5 seconds, making it twice as effective to reload consecutive shots than just reloading one shell at a time. Next up for the soldier's secondaries, we have the reserve shooter. The reserve shooter is a customized pump action shotgun with a wooden forend and stock and an olive shaped metal barrel and receiver. The reserve shooter stores 4 shells compared to the shotgun 6 and still carries the 32 in reserve. The reserve shooter's damage functions exactly the same as the shotgun, dealing a maximum of 9 damage per pellet, a base of 6 damage per pellet, and a minimum of 3 per pellet. It shoots 10 pellets, dealing at point blank 80 to 90 damage, at medium range 10 to 30, and at long range 3 to 10, and on critical hits will deal 18 damage per pellet, and on mini crits will deal 8.1 to 12.1 per pellet. The important thing to note about the reserve shooter's damage is that it will mini crit airborne targets who are pushed in the air by sources of knockback, such as explosions, compression blasts, or even the grappling hook from manpower. This means if a soldier is in the air, or you juggle someone up with a rocket, and you pull out the reserve shooter and shoot them, you do a mini crit dealing more damage. And finally, onto the function times, which are identical to the shotgun, with attack intervals of 0.625 seconds, a first reload of 1 second, with all consecutive reloads taking 0.5 seconds. And the last thing to note about the reserve shooter is that it deploys 20% faster, so 0.4 seconds to deploy, and it holsters 15% faster, which means it holsters in 0.425 seconds instead of the normal 0.5 second. The panic attack is the last shotgun secondary the soldier has at his disposal and it is definitely the most interesting. It's a pump action shotgun with a drum magazine attached to the front. The panic attack functions similarly to the beggar's bazooka starting with zero ammo loaded but loads up to four shots as you hold down your primary fire. Unlike the beggar's bazooka you can hold those four shots indefinitely without having to worry about them misfiring. The panic attack carries 32 ammo in reserve. The panic attack's damage is equivalent to that of the stock shotgun or the reserve shooter dealing 9 damage a pellet at maximum ramp up, 6 base damage per pellet, and a maximum fall up of 3 damage per pellet. It fires 10 pellets for a point blank damage of 80 to 90, a medium range damage of 10 to 30, and at long range it'll deal about 3 to 10. On a critical hit it deals 18 damage a pellet, and on mini crits it deals from 8.1 to 12.5 damage per pellet. Now the function times with this weapon are where it really gets interesting. The attack interval isn't constant like with all the other weapons you're used to. It varies based on your health at the time of shooting. This graph that I will totally remember to put on screen screen right now shows the panic attack has a base attack interval 30% faster than the stock shotgun at around 0.4375 seconds in between shots. As the soldier's health falls, starting at 90% or 180 health without the battalion's backup on of course, the time in between shots will decrease linearly until you are at about 20% or 40 health, when your attack interval will be about 0.2375 seconds where it will stay anywhere below this amount of health. The weapon reloads twice as fast as a normal shotgun, loading its first shell in half a second and all consecutive shots in a quarter of a second. At 40 health or below, you can load 4 shots and fire them in just about under 2 seconds. One last thing to note about the panic attack is that the lower your health is, the more spread your weapon will have, making it less accurate as your health lowered. And now we have one of the most interesting soldier secondary weapons, the Righteous Bison. The Bison is a handheld, retro-futuristic, steampunk-styled ray gun that holds 4 ammo and has an infinite amount of ammo in reserves, much like the Cow Mangler. It has a bar on the HUD that depletes as you fire shots, and when you reload, it'll just fill the bar back up. 
The Righteous Bison fires the slowest moving projectile in the game, but it is unreflectable. This beam pierces targets in a straight line at the cost of dealing heavily reduced damage to buildings and players with each successful penetration because it'll deal 25% less damage to each target hit. And speaking of the bison's damage, it has a maximum damage of 54 to players, a base damage of 45, and a maximum falloff of 24 damage. To buildings, it'll only do 9 damage per shot from any range. On a critical hit, it'll deal 135 damage, and on mini crits, it'll deal 61 to 73 depending on your range to the target. And then for the function times, the bison has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between shots, a first reload speed of 0.92 seconds, and a consecutive reload speed of 0.4 seconds. And some final things to note about the Righteous Bison are that, after passing through 5 targets, it won't do any damage at all because the damage reduction on the shot will be so high after passing through that many targets that it just won't deal damage, that there's a 25% chance for a special death animation to play when you get a kill with this weapon, and that you can use the projectile to light Huntsman arrows on fire. This weapon goes out to all of you soldiers who just love jumping. That's right, it's the gunboats. The gunboats are a pair of modified metal reinforced jump boots used by paratroopers, and that serve a very simple purpose for the soldier by reducing self damage taken from rocket jumps by 60%. This means that a rocket that can normally deal 27 to 89 self damage would only deal about 27 to 46. Now this damage reduction is only applied when the rocket only hits you. This means if the rocket splash damage hits an enemy as well as you, you'll still take full self damage. A successful rocket jump is not needed to gain the blast resistance from the gunboat as any rocket that you fire that just hits a wall or hits the ground will be reduced as long as it doesn't hit an enemy. This reduction also applies to misfires from the beggar's bazooka and you still gain the reduction even if you deal damage to enemy buildings. The soldier also has a second pair of shoes, the Mantreads, a pair of dark brown tanker boots. The Mantreads reduce knockback given to the soldier by 75%. This means all shots that would normally knock you back, like scatter guns, rockets, sticky bombs, so you can just walk into enemy fire. This does not apply to your own weapons and does not impede rocket jumping. Also doesn't apply to non-damaging knockback sources such as Pyro's Compression Blast. The interesting thing about this weapon is whenever you land on an enemy and you fell from a height great enough to cause fall damage, you will take no fall damage and instead deal triple the damage you would have taken to that enemy player. When you land on someone and deal damage with them, it'll play a unique sound and the soldier's screen will shake. This cannot affect buildings and it is more of a gimmick than anything else. And now we'll talk about the soldier's backpack secondary, starting with the buff banner. The buff banner is a tattered battle flag mounted on a small backpack accompanied by a dented brass bugle. Equipping the buff banner adds a rage meter to the soldier's HUD, which fills by dealing 600 damage in a single life. When the meter is filled, the bar turns red, and you can deploy the banner by blowing on the bugle, which takes 3 seconds. If you continue to hold down your primary fire, it'll delay the buff until you release it so you can store it for just the right moment. Once deployed, all teammates within 450 hammer units are granted 100% mini crits for 10 seconds as long as they are standing within that radius. While boosted, teammates' weapons will brighten, and all that player's damage sources will be boosted, even if that source is not near you. This means an engineer's sentry will deal mini crits regardless of where it is on the map as long as the engineer is near you. This goes for afterburns, sticky bombs that were laid before the buff was activated, and traveling rockets. Damage sources that are inside your buff range will not be boosted if the source's creator is not in the area. If the buff banner is the offensive soldier's backpack of choice, then the battalion's backpack is definitely at the end of that spectrum. It is a military backpack mounted radio transceiver featuring a folded map secured by two brown straps along with an attached compass accompanied by a bronze bugle. Just by having this item equipped, the soldier gains an additional 20 health, raising his total health pool to 220. This also raises how much he can be overhealed up to 330. Just like with the buff banner, equipping this item adds a rage meter to the HUD that is filled by dealing 600 damage over one life with any weapon. When that meter is filled, you can blow your horn by pressing your primary fire key, which will take slightly less time to activate than the buff banner, taking only 2.645 seconds, unlike the buff banner's 3. It can be held like the buff banner by continuing to hold down your primary fire key after blowing the horn to deploy it when you want it. Once activated, all teammates within 450 hammer units of you gain a 35% resistance to all regular damage, immunity to mini crits and critical hits, and a 50% resistance to sentry damage. The critical hit immunity also negates the increase in knockback that critical hits normally incur. The damage resistance stacks multiplicatively with all other damage modifiers such as the pain train's bullet weakness and the charge and charge's explosive resistance. 
The next backpack falls in between the others, not being exclusively defensive or offensive. The Conqueror excels at keeping the soldier alive above all else. The Conch is a light brown wooden box with dark brown corners and a quad diamond shaped insignia accompanied by a conch shell. Just like the other banners, when equipped, a rage meter will appear on your HUD, but unlike the other banners, it only takes 480 damage to fill the conch instead of the 600 needed for the buff banner or the battalion's backup. When filled, you press your primary fire down to blow into the conch, which takes 3 seconds, and just like the other banners, it can be held down so you can release the buff at the best moment. When activated, all teammates within 450 hammer units will regain 35% of all damage dealt back as health and they will gain a speed boost identical to the disciplinary action for the duration of the buff. The speed boost will increase scouts by 26.3% to 505 hammer units per second, soldiers by 40% to 336 hammer units per second, pyros, engineers, and snipers by 35% to 405 hammer units per second, heavies by 40% to 322 hammer units per second, and medics and spies by 32.8% to 400 25 hammer units per second. The buff lasts for 10 seconds and teammates can go in and out of the radius of it. Just by equipping the Conqueror, the soldier also gains a passive self healing which operates like the medic. Right after you take damage, it will start healing you at about 1 health per second which will ramp up as long as you don't take damage. It ramps up for about 9.5 seconds to a maximum of 4 health per second. Please note that this healing resets every time you take damage going back to 1 health per second and will need 9 seconds again to ramp up. And the final secondary we have to talk about for the soldier is the base jumper. The base jumper is a parachuting backpack that deploys a grayish white parachute with various rips and holes on top of it. The base jumper is a fairly simple item. You give up your secondary slot for the ability to parachute any time in the air by pressing your jump key again. This means any time you're in the air, even if you just did a little hop, you can deploy the chute. While deployed, the soldier's vertical descent will be capped at 112 hammer units per second, which is roughly 37.3% of the soldier's base speed. The soldier will still retain his ability to strafe while parachuting, and it's even heightened in some degrees. The parachute can be used to fire rockets down from the skybox, save yourself from an embarrassing death, throw off enemies aim by toggling it on and off, or go for those sick market gardener kills. <laughs> hey, good to see that you've stuck through this video so long. Don't worry, it shouldn't be too much longer. We just have to finish talking about the melee weapons. Like always, annotations will be on screen right now if you want to jump to any weapon in particular. And before we jump into this final set, I just wanted to say that for a lot of these weapons, minus the equalizer, don't have a lot going for them in the way of damage numbers or attack intervals, so a lot of the melee weapons time spent will be on their special abilities. But this should be a shorter weapon category, so you know, which you might be pretty happy about. But let's get into this. Now to start off the melees, we'll start with the soldier's bread and butter, the shovel. The shovel is exactly what it sounds like, a handheld folding shovel. It deals basic melee damage at 65 a hit, doing 195 on critical hits and 88 damage on mini crits. Then for function times, the shovel has an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between swings. All in all, the shovel doesn't really have anything special going on, it's just a simple, reliable melee weapon. And I hope you weren't expecting another simple melee weapon, because now we're talking about the Equalizer. The Equalizer is a silver-headed pickaxe with blood on both ends that has some pretty complicated damage stats. The Equalizer deals a measly 33 damage while the soldier is at full health or overhealed, but as his health drops, the damage increases linearly. The damage you deal at any value of health can be given by the equation 107.25 minus 0.37295 times your current health value of H. Here's a graphical representation of this function. It is important to note that the numbers will always round up, so if the calculation says that at 80 health you'll be dealing 77.414 damage, the game will round that up to 78 damage. For convenience here, I'll mention some of the common values. At 114 health, the soldier will be dealing base melee damage with the equalizer at 65 damage. At 52 health, he will be dealing 88 damage, the mini crit value of a normal shovel, and at 1 health you'll be dealing the weapon's maximum damage of 107 per swing. And because there are too many values to list, just remember that critical hits will always deal 3 times the damage that the normal attack would do, so at full health you would be dealing 66 damage, and at minimum health you would be dealing 321 damage on a crit. Similarly, mini crits deal 35% more damage than the base value of the attack. Finally, the equalizer has the same attack interval as a shovel, with a 0.8 second in between swing, and all healing received for medics or objectives such as payloads, the doomsday lift, or the beater carrier will be reduced by 90%, which is next to nothing. Now that the equalizer is out of the way, we can get to the simpler melees again. All aboard the pain train! Toot toot! 
The paint train is a broken wooden handle with dark tape outfitted with a large railroad stake and several bent nails. The paint train deals damage identical to the shovel, dishing out 65 damage with a normal hit, 195 damage on a crit, and 88 damage on a mini crit. Its function time is also identical to the attack interval of the shovel, with 0.8 seconds in between attacks. The major difference between this and the shovel, besides its cool name and appearance, is that while it's equipped, the soldier caps objectives as fast as a scout, counting as two bodies instead of one. And what is the cost for this wonderful effect, you might be asking? Well, a 10% bullet vulnerability all the time. Now our next weapon comes all the way from the Shogun pack, and has been folded over a thousand times. That's right, it's the Half Zatoichi. It's a samurai's katana with a circular guard adorned with a brown hilt wrapping. The Zatoichi deals normal melee damage at 65 damage a hit, 195 damage on critical hits, and 88 damage on mini crits. It should be noted that if you attack a player who's also wielding this weapon, that it'll instantly kill them, be it soldier or demo man. The katana functions the same as the shovel with a 0.8 second attack interval. It is also classified as a sword, so it takes twice as long to draw or sheath it, so it takes a full second to bring it out or put it away. But it also has extra range to compensate. The sword also has a healing effect on kill, restoring half of the soldier's total health pool. This means 100 health normally, or 110 if you have the battalion's backpack equipped. The healing can actually overheal you if you are near full health, unlike the conqueror or the black box. The sword is also honor bound, meaning if it is sheathed before you get a kill, with it, it will deal 50 damage to the soldier. If sheathed after gaining a kill, you will not incur any damage from the blade, and if you try sheathing it while you're below 50 health, it will not allow you to put it away. Have you ever felt the urge to whip your team into high gear? Well with a disciplinary action, you can. This riding crop whip, with its wooden stock and loose leather loop, is the perfect tool for you. Now, before we get into the real meat of this whip, I have to mention that it deals 25% less damage than the stock shovel, dishing out 49 damage on a normal hit, 146 damage on a crit, and 66 damage on mini crits. Its function times are also the same as the other melee weapons so far, with an attack interval of 0.8 seconds in between swings. But the disciplinary action doesn't shine for damage. It shines for being able to whip your teammates into action. On hit, your teammates will gain a speed boost for 2 seconds, and you will gain the boost for 3.6 seconds. The speed boost will increase scouts by 26.3% to 505 hammer units per second, soldiers by 40% to 336 hammer units, pyros, engineers, and snipers by 35% to 405 hammer units per second, heavies by 40%, so they get boosted up to 322 hammer units per second, and finally, medic and spies get boosted by 32.8% to 425 hammer units per second. The whip also has a 70% longer range than the other stock melee weapons. It can even hit targets behind you because of this. Multiple teammates can be hit and boosted at the same time, and hitting a disguised enemy spy will damage him but he will still gain the speed boost. Now this one goes out to all the trollagers in the audience. That's right, it's the Market Gardener, and honestly there's not much to say about this one. It's an entrenching shovel with a tan wooden handle fastened with green metal that deals identical damage to the stock shovel, dealing 65 damage on a normal hit, 105 damage on a critical hit, and 88 damage on mini crits. It is a slower attack interval than the stock, with a 0.96 second delay in between attacks, but it has the special ability of gaining 100% crits while airborne via an explosive, and that's really all it is for this one, but though it does look pretty cool when you get a kill with it. And the last weapon of this video will be the one, the only, the escape plan. The escape plan is a well-worn pickaxe at the soldier's disposal that deals damage equal to the shovel, dealing out 65 damage on a normal hit, 195 on a crit, and 88 damage on a mini crit. Its function times are also the same, with a 0.8 second attack interval. So what makes this one so special? We can't end this one on another market gardener, can we? Well, the escape plan boosts the soldier's speed the lower his health is. This boost comes in tiers based on your health at the current moment. You can refer back to the very beginning of this video for an in-depth version of the numbers associated with this, but here I'm just going to give you the lowdown. While your health is anywhere above 160, you will not gain a benefit from this weapon, so don't go whipping it out. At 160 to 121 health, you will get a 10% speed boost to 264 hammer units per second. At 120 to 81 health, you will get a 20% boost in speed to 288 hammer units per second, which is faster than a demo man. From 80 to 41, the boost is 40%, so the soldier moves at 330. 36 hammer units per second, which makes him faster than the medic. And finally, while the soldier is below 41 health, the escape plan will boost his speed by 50%. This means 384 hammer units per second. This is only 4% slower than the scout. The downside to this is that while the weapon is active, you are not only gaining a speed boost, but all incoming damage will become mini crits because you are marked for death. And on top of that, you receive 90% less healing from all medics and objectives. 
Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. You sat through all 45 odd minutes that this has been, and I wanted to say thank you to anybody who sat through and watched this, even if you just clicked to the weapons that you wanted to see. I put a lot of time and effort into making these, and even though they're not superbly well made, I do take a lot of pride in what I do. And if you did not like something you saw here, please tell me in the comments below. Please leave me a feedback source, like something that I can prove on in the next one, because I do want to make one of these for each of the classes. I wanted to say again, thanks for watching. I'm really happy if you enjoyed this, and like I said, if you didn't enjoy something, please tell me. And maybe stick around on this channel, maybe you'll see something you like come out. I'm going to be making more of these, so stick around if you want to see some more of those. Thanks for watching.